Hello, biology students. Now we're going to jump into a whole process called protein synthesis. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about the first step called transcription. All right, let's jump in because it's very deep. All right, before we do this, since we're talking about protein synthesis, we need to review proteins, our macromolecule category. Just like all macromolecules, they are made up of building blocks called monomers. Specifically, this time, those building blocks are called an amino acid. This is something you will need to know, that that is the name of the building block for proteins. Those amino acids are connected by small bonds called peptide bonds. And as we build more and more amino acids together in a chain, we will then eventually have a big macromolecule or polymer called a protein. So lots of amino acids together is called a protein. All right, now that we know a little bit about proteins and their structure, let's review the function. Remember, the function of proteins is very detailed, and there's a lot of different types. There's structure. It gives us our bones and our hair and our nails. There are defense, like antibodies. They help us transport things, like blood cells transport oxygen. And they help speed up chemical reactions, like our enzymes. Notice that here we do not have energy as a major function of proteins. Last but not least, we do have movement, but again, we do not have energy. Okay, now let's jump into the thick of things. When we talk about protein synthesis, we're going to start with our best friend that we've been talking about a lot, DNA. DNA is made up of A's, T's, C's, and G's in a double helix, but recently we learned the definition of the word gene. Gene is a sequence of nucleotides, A's, T's, C's, and G's in the DNA, and it is going to make a recipe or a code for a single protein. So those letters tell us the details or ingredients to make up a protein. When we talk about protein synthesis, it's going to be very detailed, but we're going to keep coming back to the same drawing. So I would suggest you actually draw this image. This is going to be our overview picture. Protein synthesis is going to start with DNA. We knew that this was DNA because it's a double helix. We're going to be talking about what is circled today, this first step called transcription. In this process, we're going to be making DNA's odd cousin, RNA, specifically a certain type of RNA called mRNA. Next class, we are going to start learning about the end of this. Because this is called protein synthesis to make a protein, what do you think our last player is going to be? Protein. And to make a protein, we have a second step called translation, and that'll be a different set of notes. Today, though, which one are we fo focusing on? We're going to only focus on this half, DNA to RNA, transcription, to write, to transcribe. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So to talk about that, we need to know a lot more about our friend RNA, because really we're experts on DNA, not RNA. So what is the difference between DNA and RNA? And this is kind of a difficult picture, so you don't need to draw this. I'm going to summarize it in a table. What I notice immediately is DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is double-stranded. What do I see for RNA? It is single-stranded. Let's look at the different letters. They both have C, they both have G, they both have A, but... DNA we know has T, RNA has U instead of T. All right, so that's kind of weird. Let's learn about it in more detail. Let's make the following chart. We're going to have a three-way T chart with a column for DNA, a column for both, and a column for RNA. Our first comparison is going to be that DNA was double-stranded and RNA was single-stranded. They actually have different sugars, which is the part of the name that makes the R or the D. The D stands for deoxyribose sugar, and the R stands for ribose sugar. The difference between ribose and deoxyribose is 
deoxyribose is missing a oxygen without an oxygen. Okay, you don't need to know that. That's an IB concept, but you do need to know the different types of sugars. They have different bases. They have some in common. A, C, and G are in common between both of them. But we know DNA had T, thymine, but RNA doesn't have T. It has uracil, U. And we're going to learn more about that as we continue forward. They are both considered nucleic acids. Remember, the NA in DNA is for nucleic acids. And because they're both nucleic acids, they're made up of the same monomer, nucleotides. And actually, we're not going to look at that last one. We're going to keep going because that last one is confusing. Okay, let's go. RNA, because it has slightly different bases, is going to have slightly different base pairing rules. And this is what we'll practice a lot in class. When we write a new strand of RNA bases based on a DNA template, we usually have the DNA template look like this. So write out your DNA template. T, A, C, C, G, T, T, A, A. Normally, underneath, we would write DNA. But now, we're learning that we can actually use this DNA template to write RNA bases. That would be the process of transcription, going from DNA to RNA. So here, we would have T go with A, but our confusion would be, what would A go with? A goes with U. So wherever you would normally, in DNA, write a T, now we're going to switch it out for a U. Because guess what? In RNA, there are no Ts. So to summarize those rules, DNA T will bond with an RNA A, but the DNA A will bond with an RNA U. And that's because RNA does not have T. And C, just like normally, will always bond with G, and the other way around as well. Okay, using those rules, we're actually going to now jump into our meat, transcription. The word transcription sounds like the word transcribe or to write. And in transcription, it's going to be a lot like the process of DNA replication. And instead of making a DNA copy into DNA, I'm going to make a DNA copy into RNA. Our RNA copy of one gene of DNA is going to be called a message of RNA or a messenger RNA. I'm going to take a single section of the DNA, I'm going to make a copy. But instead of making the DNA into a DNA copy, I'm going to make it into an RNA copy. I call that a messenger RNA, mRNA. How do I do that? It's going to actually look like what DNA replication looked like a lot of the time. I'm going to start with the process of doing what to my DNA, just like in DNA replication. Well, DNA is all twisted up, so i got to unwind and unzip using my helicase enzyme, just like in DNA replication. Then I'm going to use a Another enzyme, this time instead of DNA polymerase, I'm going to use RNA polymerase to make the RNA polymer. I'm only going to make a small section, and I'm going to call that my mRNA. I'm going to use my new RNA base pairing rules, and I'm going to now have this cool single-stranded RNA section of my DNA. A small copy. It's like a copy of a single recipe in a big recipe book. Eventually, since it was such a small copy of a single recipe in the DNA, it'll be released. Now, the cool thing is DNA cannot escape the nucleus. It'll get broken apart in its chromatin form. But my RNA, my RNA can leave the nucleus, and that's going to be important for later. So to summarize, we can compare transcription, this new process, with DNA replication. In transcription, I had RNA polymerase. What did I have in DNA replication? I had DNA polymerase that made the, um, uh, the different nucleotides connect. Here I had RNA nucleotides. What kind of nucleotides did I have in DNA replication? DNA ones. Here I'm making RNA. What was I making in DNA replication? DNA. 
Here I took one strand of DNA template. Here I used both strands because I was making both copies. We will practice this in class. Good job, guys. I'm very proud of you.